William Blaylock and his wife Melinda were born to be outlaws. They fulfilled their destiny in the midst of the Civil War, when the duo became the most wanted couple in all the Blue Ridge Mountains. Our story begins at a wedding in April 1861 at Coffee's Gap, near Grandfather Mountain in North Carolina. William Blaylock was marrying Melinda Pritchard. For nearly 200 years, the Blaylock and Pritchard families had feuded. The feud began in Scotland and continued in the mountains of North Carolina. William Blaylock and his family were known Unionists, while Melinda and the Pritchards were notorious secessionists. And then there were the Coffees, who were split down the middle. But Austin Coffee, William's stepfather, was a Unionist. What a wedding party that must have been. As the story goes, most of those in attendance at the wedding would be hunting each other down in the years to come. As the Civil War began, thousands of volunteers enlisted for the Confederacy in the area, but William Blaylock had no intention of doing so. Instead, he developed a plan that would begin with him volunteering for the Confederate Army rather than being drafted. His plan was to escape his unit when they traveled to Virginia, where he could then get to freedom in the North. So he traveled to Lenore to enlist in the North Carolina Infantry. Newly minted as a sergeant, William Blaylock and his men would head to Camp Carolina to begin training. On the trip to Camp Carolina, a fellow soldier approached William for a fight. As it turned out, it was his, li his wife Melinda dressed in gear, impersonating Blaylock's younger brother. The couple set off together with their plan intact, but it immediately went awry. Their company was not sent to Virginia, but rather to the front lines in New Bern, where they were forced to fight off General Burnside. The Union lines were too far to make a run for it, so the couple waited. On a patrol, the company was ambushed and Melinda was shot in the shoulder. While treating her, the surgeon discovered their marriage, discharged Melinda, and sent her home. Clearly heartbroken without Melinda by his side, William purposely rolled in poison oak to get discharged, and it actually worked. The surgeon feared chicken pox, which could have led to others in the infantry becoming sick, so he discharged William and sent him home immediately as well. William and Melinda end up back at home near Grandfather Mountain, where they think their troubles are over with. But that wasn't the case. William was immediately reported to the Home Guard by the members of the Coffee family who were secessionists. See, the Home Guard was a combination of the modern National Guard and military police. After the report, they set out to find William to conscript him back into the work for the Confederacy. Melinda and William now had to avoid the Home Guard at all costs, and they started by spotting them a ways off from the top of Grandfather Mountain. Once the Home Guard reached their cabin, Melinda would be polite and welcome them in while William was hiding in a system of caves and ravines in the area. The couple even had a set of signals to let William know when it was safe to come home. Sometimes they would use hog calls, sometimes a quilt on a clothesline, others a candle burning in a window. William Blaylock quickly became an outlaw and started leaning into the character. At the beginning of the war, the Home Guard had been bad at their jobs, but that would all change in the summer of 1862 when Major Harvey Bingham took control of the unit. He was determined to capture every deserter in the area, and William Blaylock was his most wanted man. See, what made Major Bingham effective, but also qualified him as a murderer, was the fact that he told his men to d demand every able-bodied man they saw to enlist, and if they ran, they shot them dead. In August, Major Bingham had finally surrounded the Blaylock cabin before they could escape. There helping the home guard capture the Blaylocks were William's step-uncles, the same members of the Coffey family who first reported into the home guard. As the home guard camped outside the cabin that night, the Blaylocks snuck past the guards and escaped deep into the forest. William kept getting cornered in the mountains every so often, but was somehow able to always escape the home guard. At this time during the war, 
There are over a thousand Confederate deserters in the Blue Ridge Mountains, and some of them are encroaching on Grandfather Mountain, where William and Melinda are hiding. By happenstance, William Blaylock becomes the leader of his own gang of outlaws, intent on avoiding the Confederates at all costs. They hid out in caves inside Grandfather Mountain. Once Major Bingham learned of this, he attacked Grandfather Mountain with 50 men. The gang fought them back long enough for the Blaylocks to escape again. The Blaylocks then took the trails across state lines to Tennessee for safety. William Blaylock in Tennessee unofficially joined the Union Army as a mountain pilot, which basically meant he continued to do what he had already been doing. He was to establish escape routes for any Unionist, deserters, or Union prisoners so they could get to Tennessee and be free. So the Blaylocks head back to North Carolina to gather intelligence while they spy on the Home Guard. Soon, word gets to William that Major Bingham, his old rival, has shot one of his neighbors for running from conscription. Blaylock and his men would break up into squads and set out to get revenge. The Blaylock gang murders three home guards to start. This ambush lit the fire that would become an entire local feud between Blaylock and his gang and the home guard. During this feud, you are either on the Blaylock side or the home guard side. Eventually, one of the two would find you and kill you. No one in the Blue Ridge Mountains was safe. People would die, farms would burn, and innocent men and boys would be found dead in random spots throughout the mountains. Throughout the fighting, there would be many victims, and a lot of them were family members of the Blaylocks. In one particular ambush, Melinda is wounded again and has to be sent to a surgeon in Knoxville. While there, she learns she's pregnant. So Melinda decides to sit out the rest of the war in Tennessee while her husband continues the fight. William Blaylock was an incredible scout and spy. So much so that the Union sent 800 men along the trails he scouted to Warm Springs to ambush the local home guard. 150 home guardsmen roll into Warm Springs expecting a small band of fighters, but are instead greeted by a massive Union force. The home guards were dispatched quickly and entirely. Believe it or not, William had been holding back up until this point. Well, that all changed when Melinda's cousin, Thomas Pritchard, who was also a Union scout, was captured, jailed, beaten, and then shot and clubbed to death. The men who killed him were heard laughing and talking about how much fun it had been to kill Thomas. Blaylock and his men then went into full revenge mode, giving no quarter to anyone associated with the Confederacy. They attacked the Home Guard everywhere. While they were on patrol, while they were at their homes, while they were working in the fields, Blaylock had no intention of giving these men any more fair fights. In January of 1864, Blaylock and his gang would capture William Coffey. William Coffey was one of Blaylock's step-uncles. He was not only part of the Home Guard, but he originally reported Blaylock back when he came home from the war. One of Blaylock's men, George Perkins, on the order of Blaylock, pressed a pistol to Coffey's head and pulled the trigger. The next year, Blaylock would invade a local farm and unknowingly attack a group of armed soldiers ready to fight. Blaylock was wounded during the fight, having a bullet strike his eye, blind him, and destroying half of his face. In February of 1865, Major Bingham is back on the warpath, but this time he's in search of Austin Coffey, William Blaylock's stepfather, the known Unionist. Bingham believes Coffey is hiding Unionist fugitives. On word of Austin's appearance at his brother's farm, Major Bingham and his soldiers ride for the farm. They find and arrest Austin Coffey while William Blaylock's mother, Austin Coffey's wife, watches in horror. On the way to imprisonment, a captain of the Home Guard suddenly orders one of his men to kill Austin Coffey. After a hesitation from the first soldier, the captain orders another. 
So Robert Glass executes Austin Coffey on the spot and dumps his body into the snow. It was only a matter of time until word of the execution of William's stepfather reached him. And when it did, he vowed to kill the man ultimately responsible, John Boyd, who he himself had been involved in this feud for most of the war. Months of attacks and ambushes from Blaylock and his gang failed to turn up John Boyd, the man whom William blames for the death of his stepfather. On April 26, 1865, the Civil War in North Carolina officially came to an end when General Johnston surrendered to General Sherman. As you might guess, the war doesn't end for William Blaylock and his men. Now discharged from the Union Army, blind in one eye, and ragged from years of being an outlaw in his own home, William Blaylock rededicates himself to finding John Boyd. Nearly a year later in 1866, William Blaylock finally gets his revenge on Boyd. He spots him on his way to Blowing Rock. After Blaylock identifies him, William shoots him dead on the spot. And so William Blaylock and his gang have fulfilled their revenge, even after the war. William Blaylock's wife, Melinda, would die in 1903 of old age. In 1913, Blaylock, after years of sickness, was traveling outside Hickory, pumping a handcar down the tracks. As he approached a curve, the car jumped the tracks, fell into a gorge, and crushed William to death underneath it. Some people claim that members of the Boyd family were spotted in the area prior to his death, but of course, nothing has ever been proven. The final nail in the coffin of William Blaylock's tumultuous life was the epitaph on his headstone. The man who furiously fought against the Confederacy all his life was left with a headstone that reads, quote, Soldier, 26th North Carolina Infantry, Confederate States of America. <laughs>